Um, so we can we'll still start with our. I mean, we're recording, so yeah, let's sit down. Let's do our normal. Uh, our normal. <clears throat> so start with the norms. Is this, is this chasing? Is this the chasing the cool bar? It's something like it's a really cool chasing bar. Chasing the cool bar. Chasing so, the cool. So today we decided to go. It, it's hard to see. I'm gonna have to post a picture of this so you can it's see. Not it, hard but to see this one. This I is got clearly. the tailor made. Augusta glass here specifically. Cue the music again. Very limited edition. Cue the music. Let's just. I've never been fortunate enough to go to Augusta yet. This will be very much bucket list. Or rich enough to go to Augusta Ryan, yet. Ryan. I hit this one actually, one. but I only hit um, Taylor made golf balls, but I hit this one apparently. But, but we told you we're, we're, what we're doing for every show is we're opening every show with some type of drink, maybe a beer, maybe a cocktail, golf something. But. What we had to do today to honor this week, we got Masters Week kicking up. We're super excited. Anybody that even oh has little, any little golf background is locked in. Tiger Woods, any chance that he's possibly going to be up there is like he, unreal. He, TV's on all and week. He could. He could. And so what we decided to make today was a. This is a vodka base. I'll be posting this so that you can see it on our Instagram. You'll see it up on the YouTube. But this is a transfusion, which is a golfer's drink. This is the, like the hottest thing to take a over the last couple of years. And the transfusion is basically a vodka base with a mine is a ginger beer. His is a ginger ale. He's not much of a ginger beer guy. It's trash. And you throw in some lime juice, and then we got the Concord grape on top of it, the Welch's. Welch's Concord Mass. It is Shout out. the most refreshing drink it you is, can have. It, it's fucking delicious. Tasty. Well, that's very our drink for necessary. episode seven of Chasing the Cool, the podcast. We're still back. Deep you one. Know? We got a deep one today. Obviously, we ended a little bit uh, abruptly last week. Um, you know, a lot's going on like we talked about and i think you know the realities of uh what's happening and and people knowing kind of what's going on um the realities of your life and and everything you've worked for and what you've been doing and spending a lot every single ounce of you and effort wise you know we really wanted to come back wanted to shoot the show but i think that this is like the most pivotal thing as far as like getting maybe this out off chest, off the, the limelight, and, and really into making people aware and the know as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so really, I mean, from there, let's. Let, I mean, where do we start? Yeah, so we kind of we kind of you know ended the show. Um, like so, we're it, there's been a lot going on with me for a long time this year. You know, really heavy things, kind of getting aggressive. Um, where I'm at with Trust Me Vodka specifically, which I've has been my you know 100% focus for numerous years now, as we talked about. Um, uh, the end of that last episode for anybody that watched it, kind of got a phone call at the end. Um, was a, was a little bit different um, than I was expecting. You know, a little bit different type of news. Um, I've I've been uh, very optimistic and positive and um, doing the best I can and just just really taking a back seat to it, but at the same time being, you know, positive and, and hoping that um, there were some things being taken care of that could advance and get us to a point that we could be excited again, talk about it, talk about where we're at, talk about what's happened. It was a, it was a very different uh, phone call that basically was just as simple as letting me know that there was a deadline as far as where we were going to be to be able to possibly move forward with something. Um, the deadline that these, the group um, had, had worked together with um, – Trust me, Vodka and the current CEO, um, they did not align on that um, and kind of kind of stopped. And it was like, well, we'll get you an update, you know, in the next two, three days, myself along with everyone else. And then um, kind of found out from you and a few people, I started getting phone calls and things pre- pretty early today. Um, and you were one of them. Obviously, mm-hmm. no, we were going to be here kind of talking about this and we didn't have complete information yet it's st- still a little vague some of the things that we know and can talk about but you know basically there was a you know a kind of a release put out from this group that was um working on this that that yeah. you, that you have that you might want to you know kind of kind of get into and and read and i guess we could go from there for anybody mm-hmm. that that either one um you know from my understand this was uh 
put up put out on multiple Facebook pages um, for people that are shareholders to Trust Me Vodka specifically. Once again, for anybody that's never doesn't know me, that hasn't kind of heard the backstory of Trust Me Vodka, which we'll dig into yeah, a little we'll bit. Um, it is it is a company where we basically kind of went out and would you know pursue shareholders, small investment, and grow a large group of people to be able to build a successful mm-hmm. brand that we could then you know hopefully have someone acquire and sell, and that you would you know make your money back and had. It's been, you know, you've, you've been part of it from the th- side of a shareholder as well as, you know, participating with it at multiple venues that you run and, and you know, supporting me and the brand and your investment, mm-hmm. et cetera, which was the whole kind of concept and... behind this is the amount of people that we could accumulate that could all bring different things to the table to be able to help us succeed in doing something that a lot of people have done, but in a unique and different way. Mm-hmm. And um, I was obviously a big a uh, big part of that and a supporter of um, someone that I started the brand with in the very beginning. Um, you know, it's as early as 2013. Um, that is back when I came up with the, the, the name and the concept behind and had something like this, which was a kind yeah. of a presentation I that, I, that I made. 16. Um, to present and you know it, it even kind of sat on a table like this got a little cup holder for it and you could yeah. you know, take that off and then you would go in and you would pull out this beautiful book that was you know kind of conceptually you know where the, the first visions that I had in my head as far as the name and concepts of bottle and how it would be made and what it would look like and um, you know down to merchandise and everything and you know kind of just a, a fun little thing that this was this yeah. was the first one and, and from there um, Mark Sima, who has the you know been the active CEO ever since then, um, as I created and founded that, and we kind of partnered together, and I looked at his business sense to be able to go, you know, as a creative huge pers- background, as a creative as a creative person, my you know my strengths in business maybe aren't the best, and sometimes you need to realize that you know you, you want to go grab the best in their fields and put people together to make the best brand and have the best chance that you can. So um, this was something that. I kind of presented to him and he went off and got the trademarks and did the things and started moving forward and you know had the concept of bringing these shareholders and raising money um some of the things that you know they, w- once i did that it was my okay what's what does this look like to differentiate it from a very competitive space obviously um what what can we do different vodkas vodka as far as the world knows yeah. um you, you and i can also argue that that they're when vod- we initially vodkas, talked it was... vodkas do have very differentiation that's yeah. very much you know and again as you get older and start to get the the effects of what vodka does to you the next day etc um you start to learn those things but in general marketing wise in a very oversaturated market you have to what is it that makes you even want to look at it the name that was what makes you stand out that that was number one for me was the name you know the name trust me was something that could be you know looked at as a negative or a positive but so it was my job to tell why it's a positive name it's a positive vibe Mm -hmm. and what that meant um along the way had a a great longtime friend of mine back from the motocross world he used to race with them and he's from the you know action sports industry Derek swinford so as I was putting together some of these presentation things for our first ever meetings to present to shareholders, um, Derek Swinford was pr- uh, you know, printing some of the products with his company, Monster Media. And immediately, he, the, the phone rang one second after he got the first email of things I was trying to get him to, to create for us for these meetings. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what is this? What are you doing? And it's like, oh, well, you know, we have a meeting coming up. And here's what it is. Like, I'm in. Like, I'm in. I'm ready to. So, so he was actually really our first, you know, on paper wrote that first large. Back then, we had a larger amount that you would write a check for to, yeah, to kind initials. of get in. It was different than a, you know, a couple of years later, we kind of took a different approach to get smaller investments and get a larger group of people as opposed to um, how we started it. But mm-hmm. Derek Stone was the first one. The reason he was so influential in this is because his background in art and what his company does, he also had a company called Prince on Wood. His background is he's in Riverside, still based out of Riverside, um, same place that Shepard Ferry, um, Jeff Soto, who was one of our first artists. Guys like this, the background of that kind of like pop surrealism and like that, just that, that it's a really unique type of art that I really adapted to and Derek kind of mm-hmm. introduced me to it. And then there was movies like Exit Through the Gift Shop and these ones that really turn you on to Banksy and the Shepherd Ferry and like the guerrilla marketing of a lot of what you kind of see in some of the Visually, backgrounds. Of, what's we talked about and... Chasing the Cool and OCD and kind of where I pulled a lot of that inspiration to have that guerrilla marketing and that feel and that vibe of 
that unique art. I mean, you know, in my house and things, when you walk in, it's it's filled with art that people look at. That's just it's not what you're used to yeah. seeing when you think of art. You know, yeah. so but it's really unique where it gets people are just like, oh my god, yeah, I can't you, you just sit there. Conversation. So I really wanted like, man, well, there, there's the uniqueness of what I would want to bring to the brand. You know, and Derek had the connections and the people and kind of had the support to go, hey, like. Mark, this is what this is what we got to do. You know, this, this is what we're doing. This is the style of art. This is the guy, and Jeff Soto is the guy. He's my buddy. I got. I'll call so him. So that all. That's where. It's, so that, this, that was the, the first artist. That's that where that started. Like Jeff Soto was the first artist. He did these owls on our bottle. It was amazing. They're it was awesome. You know, yeah, we and, released. And, and when we started that, that was the, that was kind of the whole thing. Was the owls were um, not the brand. People in the beginning think that. Go, oh, okay, owls. That's your. That's your. That's brand. your branding. 30, you know, 40, 50 years. Guy, yeah. But it's not. So immediately we had to jump into a great friend of mine, James Haunt. Yeah, um, incredible his, bottles. James Haunt, you know, Justin Glickman, his his agent, who also became in the future his agent for Teddy Kelly, who was also in our bottles later. Helicopter through a shareholder that got wrapped. So all this whole story of art started to come together, and he introduced us to Tara McPherson, who is huge in the industry and based out of New York, and it's to Kai Koopman. So what happened after four, five, six artists is I started to kind of grab, almost when we talk about these celebrity athletes, for me, these artists were had that mm-hmm. same type of, I'm like, oh my God, like I get to talk to this person and work with them and, and then go shoot videos with them and, and, and work with how their art's going to fit on the bottle, you know? So I would kind of, you know, go in and do all that and create, this is how we're going to work with you. This is how the contracts work. This is how, how the artwork looks. This is how we do the whole thing. So the more I continue to do that, you know, it became fun and like, what what's the rollout of like going from this one to this one to what's holiday look like? I mean, when, when you first started real quick though, like when this company started, like, was it, we got to do artwork and do different artwork or did yeah. it start with, with Soto? Yeah. So then, it was always the concept. So again, when you, when our, our concept go. was 20,000 bottles per, that's a bat, a small batch of vodka. So we would have one artist that would represent 20,000 yeah. bottles. And you had two bottles. Right. So organic, when those and are gluten-free and organic, two. a lot of times, you know, be two individual ones from the artist or be maybe a story that went together that would be featured on the shelf showing the two yeah. artists. So, um, through, through that, yes, there was always the intent of wait until we have five, six, 10, 12 different artists that you can yeah. line up on a shelf, which became part of the kind of, it kind of, accidentally became part of this shareholder, you know, the people that got behind it would not just want the investment, they would want the bottles, they would want to collect them, they would want to, you know, show off, you know, what what they have in the back of the bar. All this is through my background in Ethica, through my, you know, obsession with Nike and being a sneakerhead and all these things, I really understood if you can create something great that people have to have and limit it, that you can't get it forever, um, over time, which this, took a little while to get to that point but over time oh god i need that jeff soda bottle you know i I mean i've i've sold and traded out bottles with different collectors from the brand Mm -hmm. as well so that was always for me that was a vision that i had that i knew was going to take two to three years for other people to really see that you knew like you were like okay it's going to take like getting them the 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 things i used to design in most bottles tito's I mean, Tito Smirnoff, the same thing for 35, 40 years. Same thing, and then they barely were good. So so that was, for me, it was super exciting, but also as a designer in apparel or anything, you always get to that point where I design things that don't come out for a year, year and a half. By the time they come out, you you don't give a shit anymore. You're you're sick of it. People have already seen it. It's just like, oh my God, wait till you see what I just did yesterday that won't be out for another year. Wish I could show it to you now. So Mm -hmm. those are the types of things that, that that was what I brought to the table um, was really understanding the ability of what I'd done before with other brands and apparel, et cetera, but how to create that limited piece that, again, I think the best way to understand is for anyone that sees Nike shoes and how hard it is we to ta- get these I was going to say, we that, talked about that last <clears throat> The value episode, of what yeah. a pair of shoes that sold years ago for $80, $100 is now, <clears throat> you know, 400 1200 whatever it is, that's the, uh, <clears throat> that's the difference in I want to create that. This isn't a whiskey. This isn't a wine. So... Vodka is ultimately $20, $30 retail. Yeah. I love that we're coming out of the gates. We're talking about <laughs> the, I, I think there's a lot of people, you got to understand, like anyone that doesn't understand, I'm just going to just briskly go over this, that doesn't understand what Trust Me Vodka is. And there's some people that don't know that might be watching us. I mean, we're talking about a company that when you presented the book, I was just somebody that you knew and we became good friends right away. And you're talking about the backbone of the people involved and your art, I already knew 
that you were a rock chip taking off and the people you had around you, this is a crowdfunded kind of regulation A, B, whatever, you know, like kind of people, like you wanted people around. And I think that was the concept. I don't think a lot of people get like how gravitational it was for you at that yeah. starting point. Um, and you can talk about that. Let's talk about that. I mean, really, once you got the artist and once you talked to your boys and you got Martin and everybody on, like where it started to take off and like what the thought process was behind the whole business plan, mm -hmm. you know? I think that that's a huge, that huge meeting point of what we're talking about today. And a lot of people don't get that there's over 20,000 people that have thrown a penny right. or 120 bucks or 120,000 into this company. Yeah. So yeah, so what, so what happened is, you know, when we got into this whole thing with art and as that started to really take, you know, transform and we got these artists and it was easier for me to start getting artists because I could really start, um, you know, going on social media and just artists that I would just want to have hanging in my house is how I could look at this of like, these are, these are our ambassadors for the brand. So that was the difference as opposed to celebrity endorsements and athlete endorsements and things like that, that we would have in the past in other brands. Um, these artist endorsements were really what we were looking towards. So it wasn't just an artist necessarily, it was an artist that had a different background, an artist from other countries and other parts of the state and et cetera. They could also, we could tell their story as well. So that was a big part of it. It wasn't just about <clears throat> talking about Trust Me Vodka, because again, that becomes boring. It's vodka, you know? Yeah. But at the same time, it was a really good vodka. It was premium. That was part of it. And, you know, again, the after effects of what you would get. But it really became, for me, is like, I need to tell this story to, to create this brand that's going to be uplifting and different and want to get people to be involved and invest their money and <clears throat> time to tell other people about it and people like you to go, okay, why, why am I kicking something off yeah. the shelf that's been here wow. forever? Absolute to throw, trust me here, you know, and over time you start to see that story. You start to, and then you start to see the passion of shareholders and people coming in and whether they're a shareholder or not, it's someone that maybe found out about it through a shareholder, you know, whatever it is, the brand grew in ways that you're used to and it grew in ways that other people hadn't done in, in the, how they do brands that create a following and this like niche following that especially here in California where we're based out of in Carlsbad, San Diego area, Inland Empire, all of that really started to grow and that allowed us, you know, as those people start to go into Lake Havasu to their the vacation was homes fast. It in was a, Arizona, it was a Nevada, and they start to move it, then it starts to like, hey, we're getting, you know, and, and really it was like, let's own our backyard, but at the same time, hey man, if all these people are gonna go and we can take over Havasu, you know, all of a sudden it took a couple summers and it was like, we were Lake Havasu, you know? So examples of how you could go in and the same thing happened with Idaho. You know, we had someone that was a shareholder here that moved to Idaho. There was so many people coming from, you know, Southern California. Where the Idaho. vodka's bought. Where, exactly. So we were, we were in, in Rigby, Idaho is where the distillery was that we would you know, hire to create this vodka, the master distiller that, you know, we were amazed by this family that grew the wheat and, the, the potatoes, Idaho potatoes, so it's the best product. So these were all marketing tools that for me were like, here's everything we can put out to show point of difference. But a lot of those things are still similar to I mean, there's other, there's other brands. You were in Blue Point to. Magazine scoring, what, 93, 94? Yeah, like, so, what, yeah, so it you know, came out of the gate. That with, in, yeah, like, great. I remember that early yeah. on it, when I was, I mean, decades, mm -hmm. decade ago, like yeah. scoring high on tasties. It wasn't just... Let's throw some shit. And in really, the once bottle. you once you get one of those in show, and it's a rep, real, you know, there, there, there's vodka. these awards that you can get. You can you can do that all day, and a lot of people do. But it's like you know how many no. how many times you, you hit hey, early. If, if you get a few people that can tell you it's great right away, and you can put it out there, well, hey, it, it, then try it for yourself. You're gonna figure yeah. it out. Which which is what happened over time is people would get involved and hear about it. Maybe they want to get involved as an investment or anything like that. It also always comes down to oh my god, beautiful, hey. I gift you a bottle, you share it with friends. It was all this concept of how you would get people to get involved. And in the end, when you actually tried the vodka, that was the tipping point for a lot of people because it was different, you know? Mm -hmm. And if, if you were a vodka connoisseur in any way and could actually taste the smoothness or anything, typically when you're mixing a drink like we're having today. You're mostly vodka. And you're we not we, we could put anything on there. Exact, same point. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk to each other in the morning like oh my god what do we do depending on what we put in here you know yeah. so that was something that that became a, a you know really like a fifth selling point of all the things of why we would tell people trust me vodka is unique and different you know yeah. it was i always tell people it's kind of crazy because at the end even when i meet with artists and sit down and get these relationships to get them to work with us <clears throat> I'm like oh yeah 
That's the best vodka you're going to have. I would Let, for, I would forget about that. You know? Let's rewind real quick. Where, <laughs> and I'm going to be honest, like, you're one of my best friends in the world. Like, where did the trust me? I actually remember you saying that. Like, mm-hmm. trust, trust me. You're going to love yeah. trust me. But where, like, real quick, where did the trust me portion, the name, like, what was your thought process? Well, the, 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 the narrative changed over time. Um, we, 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 when I say we, Mark would go lead a lot of, Mark loves to get out and lead, lead these meetings and get people behind it. So he would go out and kind of talk, talk a lot about the brand. I would, I would stay back and be the kind of, you know, behind the scenes guy. Um, Which is crazy. He would, uh, you know, so he, he would, you know, kind of, kind of came up with the narrative and sometimes I would show up to the meetings or see him on a Zoom or something and kind of like, well, that's not yeah, where that came from. Exactly Mike. it, but I mean, you know, again, thing people change things around. It's a, but anyway, so there was nothing bad being said. It was just a yeah. little bit different narrative than, than what I yeah. had created. But for me, originally, with trust me, it was really about in in a spirit side of it. It was really about the fact that these conversations right here. So when you sit down with someone and we talk about like having a drink with somebody can be can be the best thing because it's it's the social engagement of kind of how it tears down walls mm-hmm. and allows you, you know, James Haunt kind of told this story about going to Japan and other companies and other countries and, you know, spray painting and doing these walls and he painted the Berlin wall and all these things, but you go out late at night, you do whatever and you link up and you have a drink with somebody, you can sit there and laugh and look at somebody and cheers and completely break down language barriers yeah, through walls. having a cocktail, you know? And then again, if it's, if it's your people you work with, you know, you go out for a party, it's your, it's your, you know, family members in the backyard. It's it's there's so many different levels of the people that you end up having a drink with, kind of breaking those barriers down. So for me, what I like is trust me was this positive name of hey, trust me because you and I are a perfect example. Okay, that you sit down, your buddies, you start having drinks. By the end of the night, you're around the fireplace telling ideas about how oh uh, we we can do a, a restaurant better than anybody. We can create a vodka better than anybody. We can open a golf course better. Everything's Oh, I, I would do it like this. I would do that. Trust me, we would make. Trust me, we'd make a million dollars. And you, and you so, always. So had that was idea. always my yeah. thing of like, trust me, but it's but it's always a fun, positive banter of I go and it, it's the funniest part is, at the end of the night, you typically go home and you go right back to your lives and separate for the week or whatever, and whatever you talked about and whatever bar you were going to open or whatever company you were going to create, you either never talk about it or you. 99.9% of the time definitely didn't come don't, to fruition. Definitely didn't, don't do that idea. Didn't do it. So, so yeah. it was another thing that either way, how much fun did you have talking yeah. about it, telling the story and going back and forth and get everybody involved? Oh, trust me. We got to do it like this. I, I would do it so much better. I would do it. Trust so it was, me, it was always that. Right? Trust me, trust me, yeah. trust me. But again, just like anything, a name like that is so memorable. That was the other thing for me and, and, and part of it, if you notice, the, 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 um, the logo runs vertical in the bottle. So you get much more real estate out of the bottle. Mm-hmm. Typically, your Ciroc's and Absolutes and Tito's yeah, and cross. 90, per, 90 percent of point. brands are running horizontal. That takes you from this much space to we go this much space. So it gives you way more visibility Smart. when you're looking up on a wall across from a bar to go, hey, which one do I want? And typically, you already know what you want when you when you walk in and you're ordering your whiskey and your vodkas. You 95, 99 yeah. percent of the time probably already know what you're ordering, unless you can sit somewhere. Or there's people that just want to try and ha- have a lineup and go, oh, like oh, look, ah ha ha ha, trust me, ha ha. And that was the whole thing. Is you're probably going to get that initial reaction if you've never seen it before, nothing, nothing about it, even when you've already ordered your drink, and you already ordered Tito's or Grey Goose, whatever you ordered, because that's what you're used to ordering. You still sit there and look at the wall and go, oh, trust me, what? Hey, what's that? Yeah. Why do you I have know? to trust you? What's the truth? So yeah. again, the, the name, kind of memorable, funny, humorous, but positive. The artwork, all those things yeah. start to go, okay, well, if we can't get you to pull it down off the shelf at a store or at a bar and want to order it and try it and look that up, then you're, you're never going to know good or bad what's inside the bottle. So the whole thing from there was, well, what's inside the bottle, if we can get you to that point, has to be really good because we need the return customer. You know, gotcha, so yeah. so that goal was there, but again, that always became the last part of the story because we had, there was so much that was created to build the story of Trust Me and the art and the beauty of the bottle and the weight of it and the embossed logo, et cetera, yep. that it was like, oh yeah, well, here, like I, you gotta try this. Yeah, I know, and, I know that as really a, good. <laughs> as a bartender, and that was I think our conversation, just being friends back then, was like, 
what do you reach for? What bottle shape do you like? How do we do this? And that, that was the only insight, like you were just kind of like prodding, right? It was just, because you did such a good job of reaching out to thousands of different people for thousands of different avenues, because you weren't, you weren't complacent and you weren't stagnant and you were like, I want to know because I don't pour drinks, right? right? I remember you asking, like, yeah. what do you reach for? And what's the bottle? And Martin, like, what do we do? So that was really cool. I mean, that's really cool because it, it did make a difference. Like, I, and I've mm -hmm. worked in and had many, like, different venues that I've run and seeing that on the shelf, it right. did do exactly what yeah. you said. Because you can design yourself off the shelf just you as can. much by over-designing. There's a lot of companies that did that. Dan Aykroyd with his skull bottle is amazing and I got one to throw on the shelf, but that doesn't sell your product when I've had one sitting on the shelf yep. just because it, oh, this looks cool to have one. You, know? yeah, you want it, right? You want to be different, but and, not different. And, and then like the art has always been like, what's on that bottle? I want to see that bottle. And, and maybe they created it to be a novelty, you know, that you go into a store and you get one for a gift or something. But typically I think when you're starting anything, you would love the ability to be at a bar being called upon by yeah. name, which is the hardest thing to do, which was another part of in creating this. <clears throat> The hardest part is to get called upon by name. So it takes years and it takes, again, this different scenario of going, okay, now, now we've created this concept, we've created a name, we've created the art story, we've created a American-made Idaho, you know, all, all these things that make you feel good about it. And it is a great product, so there's no smoke yeah. and mirrors. It's, it's real, you know, try And for that, real quick, yeah, real quick, that too, that's my other question. like. The product wise, like just we can briskly go over because there's just so much into this, but like that was the initial formulation. Like mm -hmm. you had the initial wheat and, and yeah. corn and, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, wheat and potato, and you just went in like, we, so we, so we found, we, we found a, a group in, in Idaho that was just, there was this, we weren't searching for Idaho for anything really like that. It could have been in our backyard in California, mm -hmm. but in really wanting that premium product wanting uh, gluten-free, wanting organic, wanting American-made, things like that, um, it, it really, there wasn't a lot of that out there. Um, the, the, the company that we found in Idaho, you know, it initially turned us down. You know, that we're too busy and who the hell are you? It's Trust Me Vodka. And, yeah. and, Another you know, vodka company. So, cool. so there, was a, there was a little bit of a, you know, as things were getting developed and trademarks were going through, et cetera, um, it kind of circled back that we had someone kind of that, was, that had turned us on to that that kind of went back and was like, hey, you should, you should check these guys out. You might want to work with them. And you know, that, that was kind of how that started. But but again, that was just all, you know, happen chance that we ended up with this group in Idaho, et cetera, that was, mm -hmm. that was awesome and made an amazing product. And they're the ones that have made it to this day. So, um, yeah, it's been good. But then it became like, okay, the, the next step is, again, going and selling it. I mean, that's not, not easy in the industry. You know that, you know. So... Getting out and selling it, being a self distributor, um, we didn't want to yeah. go to a large distributor because of kind of what they do and the ability to kind of like, hey, new brand, we'll help you. You made that clear. Hey, let's early. <clears throat> cool. You're like I don't want it. Tuck that in away. A, They're taking a, away yeah. from our Tito sales. You, you made know? that clear so, in the 2016, 2017. Like, yeah. We don't want to be. So some you know, case. so very challenging because you know, kind of what can be an overnight growth or an overnight success becomes much more challenging in the fact that no, you got a long road to go pound on doors and get you know, one and two, three places to carry it. Your location was one of the first people to ever carry it years ago yeah. um, in Escondido. And, you know, that those those little ones where it's like, hey, go try it here. Okay, now go try it. Where can I get it? Well, here, here, and here. Yeah. Now here, 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 and here. <laughs> here, here. And the list started <laughs> you know, going. And then, like, uh, you know, then, then with online sales, we started to do that. That's also challenging in, in our industry because you can't just sell alcohol the same way you can sell mm -hmm. a T-shirt. You know, so mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of different challenges that we knew about and didn't know about. That's the big learning curve. You obviously know the amount of money that it takes to start anything. So that's where we started with the concept of the Derek Swinfords and multiple people that came yeah. in the beginning and invested uh, Dur during and you and this is a great point and i keep pulling you away but i'm just like so interested really the biggest thing to be dead honest about all of this is the investors mm -hmm. and you keep saying investing and investing like just go over like the concept mm -hmm. and because that's where we're at now right right so go over the concept because yeah i could put it in bins and grand and we could put it in all these places and I invested early because I was just like yeah it was like a, it was at the time right you're like talking about the scale so mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing out of all of this because that's really where your heartstrings are at yeah, right exactly yeah I mean it's it's why today as we as we you know start to unpack this and you'll understand you know kind of my you know where I'm at today that it's it's 
challenging and you know it, it's hard for me to talk about it and deal with what we're dealing with is the fact that through the business model of bringing in shareholders and having this concept to start with minimum investment we wanted the bartenders at your place and around to be Everywhere, able to go yeah. i've never i wouldn't even think to invest you know i'm just back here crunching i barely got gas to get here you know like hey but you're the one picking up the bottle and pouring it I want I want you to be part of it. We want you yeah. telling people about it, and, and we would see it. I mean, I, I go, go numerous places. Nobody knows who I am. I'd sit there. All of a sudden, I I look down like, do they? Did I hear them say, "Trust me, vodka," and and you have a bartender over that's that's talking about, "Hey, I know you just ordered a Tito's or a Grey Goose, but man, you got Carl's bad," and, and they know the story because they came in with the investment through friends and family. That's that was the whole concept for this was. There was no email blast. There was nothing that went out yeah. in your typical Kickstarter way or any of these things that you do to, to fund and do it. It was very organic and word of mouth takes two, three, four years to get to that point as opposed to months because you can you can raise millions of dollars multiple ways much quicker, but even through doing Kickstarters and stuff, if you have a really cool, you, you, you can do it overnight. It, it was always the belief that you're not going to get the same passion out of that if you do it that people way. People bought in, man. I mean, but early. people bought in because same they, they had Everybody everyone had the, the story that you had through meeting me, and and really that was because when we first ever met, that was the story that Ben introduced me and hey tell him about yeah. this before I was even doing it. But you you were in because you really had the passion, understanding, and like seeing it and seeing the logo and every little development of how it got to that next level. And then, oh my God, it tastes good. And the shape of the bottle and it's like every you little thing. You were everywhere though. Like yeah. at this point, we're going to talk about this yeah. later, but you were <clears throat> everywhere at this mm -hmm. point. I remember the year in, like you sold your soul and went <laughs> so deep and so hard. I mean, you were at every event, everywhere, anywhere I went and I saw it because it was incredible. So yep. like that's where you that, just was like well that was that was the big thing I mean, as, and... if, as as what I do for a living and what my background is with anything I've ever done and then rolling into this and what do I bring to the table, you know I learned a lot more about this because as someone that kind of come comes in as an entrepreneur and creator and co-founder it's like okay well this is what I do and this is what you do and this is what these people are going to help us do and all these things but you you kind of have your hand on every little thing and you're you're learning every aspect of the brand you're not just Hey, I'm over here as the design guy or the marketing guy, you know. So you were more than that, as I'm doing things. Sure. You're all of a sudden you're you're becoming over time, which I'm not that guy. My wife's always said, but I became that guy. You become the sales guy, and it became easier to do that because. Sorry, sales guys, but I'm not I'm not I'm not big on sales guys. But you were I, I think passionate I, about I think it. I think you think car salesmen typically when you think yeah. sales guys. So for me, that's just kind of my background in sales guys. But what would have to happen is you would go out and tell story similar to what I'm telling right now about who we are and what we're doing and what the vision is and why it's better than the next one, et cetera. But I was telling it not as a salesperson. Hey, if, if you don't like it, whatever, I'll, I'll tell the story to the next person. I, I'm telling you because you genuinely want to know and I genuinely want to tell you how cool this is and how excited I am about it that I can just tell you I'm not selling you anything. I, yeah. I don't need to. And in the end, especially if you like it, here. Here, yeah, I mean, go that, for it. That's and, the whole and thing, that, and that's it. Know? So, so that's that's ultimately where you know the sales part of it. As I started to do that, and then started to kind of understand sales and backgrounds, and like, and this is you know not easy by any means. It's not easy in this industry, but when you have something that you 100% believe in, you're passionate about, it's easier to go into places and talk to the owner of anything and and people and go, oh God, I'd be scared to death to even talk to this person. But I know the story. I know I know what I'm selling. What I'm telling you about, because I'm, it's basically I'm selling me, you know, in a sense. I'm 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 basically telling you about me, because this is everything that yeah. I did. I know I know every little aspect of it, so I can tell you everything about why you want to be part of this or why you want to carry. I don't it, or think why you people drink it. know, and we'll get into this too. But I don't think people understand like how involved and not, yeah. you weren't just a guy that created a name and just was like I'm gonna sit back here it was not ever yeah. the case yeah so that so then that becomes the you know the part I was getting into is you know you've got you've got your website you know and brands for years were always your website that that became social media and this is 2016 2017 yeah. when you were doing it. so so social media really becomes that's the modern day of websites exist and they're there and that's where you go to purchase from and kind of learn the story of the brand but social media is really 
the forefront of what brands are today. You hear about something, you go to Instagram, you go to TikTok, but yeah, that, you've tried to educate. You, you, you don't yeah. go to websites anymore. You know yeah. that, that's the thing. That, that's a that's a third, fourth, fifth place you're going to go. You know, so so for me, that like you said, that being out there and being everywhere is content. You know, content is king when you're doing anything with social media. So. Um, as much as we are raising money, we, we didn't have these big budgets that we were throwing into content creating and bringing yep. in tons of people to do stuff. So. Creative so content designer, you so see, you were the guy. And if you go on, <laughs> trust me, vodka, Instagram today, I mean, everything you see on there is 90% or more things that I shot in my garage or in my backyard. Or as, and especially when, when this, we went, I've through, been there. we went through the pandemic. So we went through the pandemic where I had to make it, we're, we're out there everywhere. I'm doing every event you can think of, one man, you know, LA to here to inland to wherever it is. And we have a team of people. And that was a bit, it became exciting as we had a team of people that would go do this in Idaho, that would, that would take our business model yeah. and go to Idaho, Colorado, and Idaho and roll out Arizona. what they saw we did here, you know, mm-hmm. it, even Temecula, things like that. Like I can't be everywhere. So we had a team of people that would do that, but it was really the shareholders that were doing this. They, they weren't necessarily getting paid to do this, anything. It was people that were just shareholders like, well, I want to do this because I want this to work so I can get my investment back. Yeah. You know? So so that's really what it is. And, and that's what motivated and, Well, everybody. they were also passionate because it yeah. was a good, it was, it, it's an incredible product, it, it, the art back. So, so it's, it, it it's, wasn't just like, oh, I just, this chinzy ass bottle fun, full it's of It's fun to, it, it's very, again, it's very fun. And I love that. We all love that. Yeah. When, when you have to go to work to pour people drinks and then tell them about vodka, and that's, it, not the worst thing you can do, you know? Yeah. So, so obviously, again, I was passionate about it for multiple reasons, but again, Southern California and San Diego and Hey, Hey, we're going to go out to uh Aviar golf club yeah. today and, and sit here and pour drinks for four or you five You had the hours. blast off. You had it's that awesome. blast off moment, and, right? And the networking, so, the networking, the networking <laughs> got huge, right? 2017, 2018, 2019. I mean, and then COVID hit, but it was like this blast off and we were throwing events and you guys were throwing concerts and, and, having events at BMW dealerships with live music, and it was everywhere you could not not see it. You could literally open your eyes. It was umbrellas and bar mats and mats and and the word of mouth and people coming just to drink that product. Right. So that was was the big thing because it became like the, like you said, overnight in a sense. Nothing happens overnight, but it felt like overnight. bit, for sure. No no different than, you know, Tito's was an overnight success 26 years later or whatever it was, you know. But but in in a sense, we we were much newer and and this brand that, in a sense, locally especially, did show up overnight in a really overcrowded space and you started to see us at all the places you're talking about. But you started to see us you know, we would put artwork and do window wraps at your liquor stores you and things like that. Put artwork. Yeah, and when, I mean, you uh, would a lot of times literally would, a lot of times be I would rolling literally artwork. Go there and roll it wasn't money. like we would, but then there was a team, yeah. and there was a team, yes, and then they were incredible. But, but yeah, I, I just remember being like not even talking to you, and you you were with them or twenty four seven filming them or whatever it was. Because yeah. again, what what you always try and do, whether you are that big or aren't that big, it's the perception of yeah. What your brand is, and it could be your Banksy. It could be in the streets, it could be like. a complete shit show. It could be, mm-hmm. and a lot of times it is. But I feel like you know Tesla is probably a shit show in some way yeah, as well. Too. Everyone, so everyone. so everybody has that. So really, what it's that about phase. is you know for me when you go to that Instagram, and if I'm not happy with what's going on at work or the people that are there or the weather shit whatever, hey, I gotta make it look for the guy in Idaho or Miami or Australia that's looking at trust me that for the first time or for the fifth time or as a shareholder that is showing their friends how cool this is they got involved with i got to make it look really freaking yeah, cool we're in a biza and this Sm- bottle's getting open real, right now real sm- real smoking mirrors a lot of that. that we had a lot of cool opportunities we had a lot of stuff that was just like hey this is this is me painting it up and making it <laughs> look good but but again that the a lot of help through came through the fact that the again the art story gave me the ability to take artists and really tell their story as part of our brand and not just always talk about the vodka, but tell the story of creating a brand name behind it and creating something that ultimately that's what we looked at more than the vodka is we would be able to create a brand and create a brand name that much like in the fashion world and all these things, the brand name that you have and being able to sell that becomes more important than just the product you're selling which for us has been vodka. And we loved the product. And I know me personally as, as an uh, OG, like kind of initial guy, and, and then all the people around us, yeah. 
we were chomping at the bit to know the next artist and when right. the next yes. artist would drop and when the next art, right? Huge. And it was like a constant, like, next artist, and you'd see the bottle. Oh, my gosh. Like, I, the next one. The and next I, had to pre- one. I had to protect that because I understand the importance, as I talked about in the very beginning of this, the importance of that buildup. So I would know, much like when I did products in, in the past, every Friday we would have limited products that would sell X amount, and we would promote and promote and promote. And then on a Friday at noon or whatever it was, it would drop just like a shoe drop and boom. And it's sold out. And you know, each time it just depends on, Oh my God, it sold out in three hours. Oh my God. It sold out in 30 minutes. Oh my, but the, de- the demand of how you protected the assets and protected the visuals and everything is what makes that succeed and work. If you show everybody when I design it, if I show you what is going to launch in a year, you're not going to give a shit when you see yeah, it in a year. A and I've been there so many times with so many brands that it's frustrating because because even brands that I work for that pay me to go, hey, we paid you to do X. We purchased it. We created a whole line. It was, it's this, this is the greatest thing. We are so happy. We can't wait. Okay. But it's in three or six months before it's going to come out or more. And then as it gets closer, hey, so, you know, we're thinking, and I'm like, wait, what happened? Well, you know, we're kind of shifted. We're, well, we're kind of we're kind of like burnt, like, but no one's seen it but me and you. Yeah. So you've just been sitting there looking at it every day, like so I did when bad. I created it. So, so again, then that's where it became like how I would present it, and when when I would even let my own partner and people that worked at the brand that have every right to see it, they should be seeing it with me. They should be looking over shoulder, watching me design it. But I knew you can't because with twenty thousand people, especially. That one person that's like, hey, don't tell anybody, but look, hey, don't tell anybody. Oh, but look, oh, oh. Next it, thing you which, know, which still happened, still happened all we'll, the time. We'll get into that. The you, you can't control that, but that was the biggest thing where I would protect. I would have to protect it all the way to where like the people that have the first right that should know about it see it like me. No, I, I can't show you. I can't show you. I, I can't. You know. And they started to get it, but people would be pissed, and shareholders would be, well, I, I want to know because I'm I'm the biggest supporter I'm an owner. of this brand, and I want to. I'm like, you put 120 dollars like, no, in. I, but I, you're I, not I get the it. Owner. Like, I, I get it, and I <laughs> yeah. I, again, I I love I, I love that it. you're that excited about it. I love it, but I I can't because or very yeah, I don't want to because I understand how important the impact is of next Friday or whatever it is. This is going to launch, and when special, you see it for the right? first time, and you see the video that we put together, and the whole thing that I did, it's like, oh my god, buy, buy, I'm in. Oh, send, and send, people send. were rebuying, and, and, and you want that. That's were, you. Yeah. You want that impact of what what sales can do, or what that like that shot of adrenaline mm-hmm. you can get in one day. There were customers, just like anything. Nobody that invested, just customers yeah. that were like, what's the next bottle? People collecting the bottles, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, this is so. This is the big boom. I mean, we had the big boom going on there for years and years and years, right? So I, I think where we're now targeting and, and with what we're talking about, like, it, so the big boom happened. We got through COVID. Everything went right. So like, where are you at? Like, COVID came through. Like, what's the next? Like, what was the next phase? Yeah. So so as COVID, um, you know, the challenges of COVID, which for businesses shut down a majority of businesses. You know, a part of the um, plan that you know me and my business partner had talked about at the time was that you know it's. It can make it through, and this is something at the time it was kind of a joke, especially 2013, 2014. You're 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 not even talking about a pandemic. Yeah, you're talking about the the crash of 2008, and you know like, hey, and when you when you lose your job or whatever, and you have, okay, but yeah, you know what, people, fortunately or unfortunately, are still gonna have some cocktails just to get through the daily crap of whatever they're dealing with. You know, yeah. so so the pandemic, you know, again, I'm gonna say probably more unfortunately for a lot of people was tough to where people probably, if they were drinking or drinking more, if they weren't, they started, you know, those things. The people that were involved, right? So for us, so for us, like, oh, well, this isn't the worst thing that ever happened to us. The only thing that we probably would have capitalized more is, again, online sales aren't as easy as they are for an apparel company like that because of issues with ABC and how you have to go through and everything you have to do. So with that, we weren't able to just just sit back and just watch the ticker go and just bottles flying off the shelf because it had to go through third parties and we were still new enough to where we were still figuring out those partnerships and things like that. So it was challenging, but in the midst of it, it was a fast forward to um, ready to drink bottle cocktails. 
So that became yeah, a new, this is a great yeah, so that, point. so that became, you know, our, our larger bottle scaled down to a smaller, um, you know, kind of half that size of three, seven, five. There was a little bit of worry about that. Like, yeah. So, the... so it was, uh, you know, it was kind of a fast forward to like, Hey, we, we kind of have to do this because laws changed overnight, you know, laws ever changed overnight to where you could yeah. take a drink to go. Have I mean, parking lots out, for out of it. I mean, too, I mean, we'd, we'd, we'd go to, you know, uh, restaurant we'd get like a soup, a a, a soup a, cup and they literally a deli put a beer cup. in it and like throw yeah. throw a lid on 16 it 16 ounce and, 32 and there's, ounce and there's police sitting out in the parking lot and you're like yeah i remember that i mean they're that, so being okay. on the restaurant side just, yeah. i remember those days and yeah. it's like you want to take a bottle like cool we could can up whatever the hell we want so through that it was the fast track of like hey we got to get this these bottle of cocktails so the, the project was kind of you know it was it was moving forward but it was like hey how fast can this happen so you know it came out with a you know like 10 flavors that we came out with that weren't great but didn't matter because again if this during this time you really couldn't lose just, yeah. just put some alcohol so give me is it bottle wet? to is go it whatever booze? let's get it out there yeah. so so it was cool so that kind of you know kicked off a new category for us with ready to drinks that were uh, starting to take off at that time but really during that time and since then and today ready to drink cocktail that category is massive you know through be it seltzers be it vodka based be it you know it, it's through the so you million, sniffed million that different ways they're early they're provide, yeah i remember you so. saying you sniffed it early you smelled yeah. that like so, a truffle pig you so again were, much you like anything it. whether we you got knew. lucky whatever it was like it it worked and we weren't some other people weren't so we, keen in the company. No, but we you we, we weren't it. pleased with the um, the flavors necessarily. Yeah, the but, but we developed, yeah. you know, we can kind of developed that and started to narrow it down and eliminate certain ones and their shelf life on certain ones the way that it was made because it was much more of a natural product that didn't have tons of preservatives in it and stuff. So gift and the curse on some of those that yeah. had to just get completely lost and and pitched out. But a lot of them it was great, you know, and it worked. And so through that was kind of the learning of like how do we how do we continue to take over that that category that's doing so well? But our biggest challenge was that we were in a bottle. So being in a bottle and being in that shelf space in say a Seven Eleven or a stadium or any of these opportunities, that that you got to have a can. Or even our, our glass was the the point of being unique. Through we're the only ones in glass on the rocks was the only other competitor that we had um, on the rocks. For anyone that doesn't know, was doing exact same thing we were, but as they made a whiskey or margarita you know they're literally partnering up with a jack daniels they're, yeah, they're partnering up with casamigos entity. they're partnering yeah. up with name brand product inside of it but it's on the rock so they had a line of of they every, everything that, yeah. you know my ties everything you can think of where we were just mostly vodka drinks even though we did do a uh, we did a margarita. We did yeah, a sex you, on the beach. So we, we had a few off, yeah. random things that, um, that that had the ones that we tested that did well. But but really the challenge was is you know that you go to open up that fridge, you can't throw a the, the way that our bottle goes and the neck and all that. It was very unique. So it was really the people that were really willing to work with us. You know those liquor stores, different places that were really I willing was that to well like today. It's still up there. Or we'd have to put our own little refrigerator on the counter yeah. or something. Some which that you don't just get to do that. You know you have to have relationship with these places that allow you to even have that opportunity because they want your product to work and they want it to sell. But they're like, we can only do so much. I mean, look look at all the stuff we have and your bottle just doesn't fit here. You know, so it was really like, man, we're we're at about probably. 20 to maybe 10 percent capability of what we could be selling and the ready to drink if we were just not in this bottle four pack you know but at the same time a lot of money spent on glass big and small glass for the weight and again we're selling a premium product and we want to compete at that upper level not tito's tito's priced way lower through the pandemic and through switching uh distributors but the Grey Goose and the Ciroc's and things like that. We wanted to be at that top shelf space, and we didn't have the ability to tell our story the way everybody else did with million dollar commercials and Super Bowl ads, mm -hmm. etc. So we had to have those the art and the the weight of the bottle and the shape and the embossing and the colors and all that to go again premium. Yeah, you, know, you see it premium. It screams premium. This is. What I want to be you know, when you pick up a high end bottle of tequila or something, yeah. you go you for know. the you go for the look of the bottle because like before you even look inside, you're like, this this thing's 130 bucks because it, look at this bottle. It's a beautiful. And either way, design. if they've never had it, it's they're gonna keep it on their yeah. shelf. So you spend you know, that, and that, and that so goes that a lot concept deeper. Of wanting to do that. The concept of wanting to do it, and this will also go full circle. One of the one of the little minuscule reasons why 
you know, financially, it's like mm-hmm. you had to go with this beautiful yeah. shipment and shipment and shipment yeah. and where's it, where it's going. Yeah, so it was a lot of, you know, uh, over time, the way that the business was ran, um, as, you know, as far as distillery in Idaho, glass that's shipped there, that's stored there in a warehouse, that's then, you know, raise money, fill bottles, ship to California. One we, part of California. We're self-distributors, so another we store it in one warehouse in California. Then it comes to a smaller warehouse that we would have a team that works out of. Distribute. Then it would come out, then we would distribute from there. A lot of times it would go back to Idaho or somewhere past Idaho to where it just, you, just you start putting the numbers together. And it's then like, after COVID, gas prices how much are money crazy. Did that, and how much money did we lose just on that? Transport, right? <laughs> yeah, so, just transport, right? Yeah, you know, so a lot of those decisions that, again, like the things that, not, not pointing fingers at anybody, they just weren't great decisions, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I think the focus a lot went towards and has been solely on the brand. Like I said, the brand name and the brand. Just blinders, just but also the brand. Also, there's a point um, which you know I think, and a lot of shareholders think this. There's a lot of shareholders that over time get very impatient and mm-hmm. what's going on? And what's going on? What's five going years, on? six years, and, and sometimes years. it's a shareholder that invested 120 dollars, and sometimes they invested 100 thousand dollars. You know, but and everyone has a right to understand what's yeah, going you can't on treat and them get that, and, and you mm-hmm. and you uh, information has to legally and does go out to shareholders. You don't have to disclose every single little move of everything that you do. But over time, again, there's a lot of people that are more, you know, that are closer, that are there on more, not a daily basis, but maybe even a weekly basis that are just kind of like, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And they're just like, oh my God. But it's the point of, you know, knowing that there is a different part beyond just raising money from shareholders and just creating a brand there's generating sales. money from sales. There's sales. Yeah. And that's that's the part. What's that, your profit margin? What do you mean? Right. So, right? so that's the part that it's kind of like, you know, I feel like we needed help into that for a long time. Um, and we and we do at a certain point, you want to look at distribution opportunities and you want to look at different sales opportunities and you want to relook at margins and you want to maybe <clears throat> This was our path in 2018, 19, 2020. Which made sense. But maybe through market change and X and profit and lack of and lack of sales and lack of opportunities. Gas and prices and transfer it, and transport. Do, and do, we, do we maybe go this way? Is there, is there something to look at there? And I think a lot of those doors were just closed just because it was. So, just, yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah, like, so there were, so like there, were, there were some raising, but there was, yeah. it was always like, nope. Yeah, so, so over, you know, over time, I think, you know, the, the, I don't say the well runs dry because money is always coming in. But, you know, the, the story, I guess, to me runs dry. Um, especially for a lot of the core people that are involved in this, the same story over and over and over and over and over is just like, okay, but like that's the story we heard in 2019 when we first invested. Yeah, it's 2024 like, now. Where, like, where, where we, what's, what we, what's going on? You know, and for me, it's like, okay, well, okay, I I don't get to make those decisions solely. I can participate as a board member, as a founder, etc. But you know, really what I got to do is try and make sure that the creative and the social media and all these things, you know, because again, let's also go back to Tito's. It has been the same damn bottle forever. So there, there's different things. The difference is sales and distribution and all that for those companies is doing this. Mm-hmm. Where we're over here trying to be different, but like, you, you know. You, you get, get too different. You got to catch and surpass. And next thing and, you yeah. know, it goes. So, so, you know, again, not, not my back. That was the background of this is where my expertise does not lie. Learning a lot. Um, mm-hmm. I also like to li- I like to listen more than I talk, uh, which probably doesn't seem that way when we no do this way. podcast. <laughs> but, but no, in in in, in situations You're like a, this, it's yeah, definitely you know, I, I've, I've always learned, and it's very keen to really listen to, especially especially experts in your space. Again, you always want to be different. That's that it's a lot of when you get into a certain space, you don't want to just fall in with the vodka people. And well, what did you do? Because then you're just going to do what they did, you know. Yeah. So that's the uniqueness to coming from different industries and doing things different. But there's also a point that you need to kind of like, well, you get too too like, unique. Well, and what are you guys doing? Yeah. Because what you're finding is, and through again networking and all the people that I would meet, like, what, why, why are you, why are you guys starting new companies and doing new things? And and we've been doing this, you know, we're eight years in. You just started one. You're already 
X distribution and you're here and you're here and you've yeah. and you it, had the same questions. It's, it's already profitable. Ultimately, like, what, that everybody else yeah, had. What, what's happening? That's, like, that's, how, why aren't we doing that? Yeah. So you had, I mean, you had these doors, obviously, like in you know, avenues that you were going through. Like, what what was the next thing that you, you I mean, really, where what was the the you went through the plateau, like where you guys were at and like, what was the next adventure? Like, what was like, where are we going with this? Right. Cause yeah. now we're here, we're on all the shelves. We have 20,000 plus investors, everyone's word of mouth. Like we were talking about, like, you know, you can only tell the story so many times. Like what yeah. was the thought process, the next the, step? Well, where it got challenging for me, you know, I, I guess for me over the last, you know, maybe a couple of years, you know, if, if not a little bit more was looking exactly like we just talked about as far as, you know, wh- where's the point where we're not just getting money from shareholders, sales and things are starting to progress with the growth of the business and things that you have to do to sustain an actual business at some point, you know? So I always believe well, we're going to get there because we're creating the products and we're out there and we're, People want the brand, and so like we're gonna get to that point, you know. How, however, we do it. So, um, as as I started kind of you know thinking about those things and really going, there's there's a lot of money being raised to sustain the business. I mean, again, the vodka and glass and the scale that we're doing and stuff, you know, cost of business as you grow becomes more significant. But over time, it was just kind of like, okay, what 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 is the next step to get to where we can really not just be getting money from shareholders, but looking at distribution opportunity, something different, just something different. I don't, yeah. I don't know what it is. Um, those were challenges we'd always kind of look at. But what also started happening is we started to lose a lot of our, you know, um, employees basically. You know, those day-to-day people that were in the office, a lot of contract workers, and you know, the structure a little bit different. But basically, look at them as employees. You know, your your day-to-day operational people that were around there, be it packing boxes in the warehouse and moving product to helping with marketing to just every day to day, writing POs for everything. It was a lot takes to Mm -hmm. run a business. So those people that have been there, you know, in a sense, since day one and with the growth as more and more people came on, um, you know, there was, there was, I guess, a lot of kind of pushback and starting to, you know, that, that inner turmoil that you start to get where I think really what it is, it's not inner turmoil with people not liking each other so much. It's, I think it's a lot of people just going, what the hell is going on? Like, what are we doing? Like you what said, are, we're eight years in, yeah. nine years in. What, what are we doing? On? Who's in charge? Who's making these decisions? You know, and, and ultimately when it, when it comes down to always every decision that you're plenty capable in this division, which is why you work here to make a certain decision or have a certain input that works towards that goal of how we all get to the top. That's the way I always look at it is you have the best salesperson you can get and the best designer that you can get and the best marketing and the best. Well, so when it always is, well, I got to go back up here to get the answer. And I can't tell you why the answer is different than what I thought we should have done or whatever. You know, it was always just kind of like, so, you're, so hitting hitting everybody's wall. Just kinda going, you're hitting a wall. Everybody's just kind of going, well, how, why I thought we were doing this. What happened here? You know, so it's just, it just, whatever it is, there's a million scenarios of just confusion and, you know, then maybe a little, you know, anger and resentment. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, it struggles financially with different things where it's like, well, we're raising money. You know, we do million dollar rounds at a time. Yeah. We're raising money. There's the millions excitement's of there. Coming. But then as people start to, you know, again, that turmoil starts to hit and shareholders start to become friends with people. They start to get more engaged into what's going on and how can we help and how come this isn't happening? And I thought we were doing this, but now we're not doing it. You know, there's so many different things that you start to, people are upset. And even shareholders that don't work there, but that are passionate about the brand start to become disgruntled shareholders that are talking. And the whole point of why we build it to get 19 to 20,000 people to talk about the brand they can do that in a negative way too, you know. Yeah. So you got to be ready for that, and you have the right to if you're not understanding or getting. You're never the really thinking though, right? To, you're right. never like, okay, all of a sudden this is going to take a turn. Yeah. Right? So, so those challenges start to hit where it's like, okay, like what what are we doing here? Because I'm I'm doing the best I can do. I'm you doing my job. To almost like be like, yeah, but like yeah, I'm I'm, <laughs> what I'm is going on. I'm not happy about this. I'm getting to a point where I like, am I going to be able to do this because Financially, just just together with just like I mean, your role psychologically, is not just a creative guy. <laughs> no, and yeah, that yeah. and that's what I, I want a lot of people to know. Like you were not just, uh huh. I created the art, I got the artist, right. and I'm doing the well. Blah, 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 it, like, as so. as a board member, 
um, yes. you, you take on a lot of roles. You and, and, were. And that was a place that I was kind of put into um, unwillingly, really. I mean, yes, of course, with something that I created. And a big company, you have to create I would, the board. I would, I would want to be a board member, but at the same time, there's a lot that goes with that and a lot that rides on your shoulders. But really, there was two board members. You know, it was myself and Mark Simo, the CEO of the brand, were the only board members. And I was kind of put into that position through previous board members that had resigned for reasons that were, okay, what story do you want to hear and, and what is that? You know, ideas, so, yeah. so either way, I was put into a position that, okay, I'm a board member now. With that and with a lot of the questions that the shareholders and different people have in, internally and externally, um, again, my position of what my strengths are and what I've always done and what I even took on from that and then the things that I had to look Learned at to do. and address and be able to answer and look into and whether I could get an answer or not. As a board member, I felt the responsibility because to the point of why we talked about these so deep, this isn't a brand where I can just go, hey, you know what, business relationships don't work. It, it, whatever it is, you, you, I've done that before. You know, you move, you move on. You did, hey, you know what? We tried. We did our Good thing. Good try. We yeah, we took. In, our best in job. this scenario, it's it's not that easy because of the fact that I personally, you know, and, and again, as someone that I feel like in some forms of the brand, especially locally here, the face of the brand through doing events, through doing the social media, through being one of the more active people that is out Way, yeah. doing those things, I feel like that's the person that like. Hey, I'm, I also have to go in and answer why this isn't happening. Yes. What What's going on here? What's going on here? I heard this. I heard that. So, like, man, I, I best I can do is look into that. Like, I don't, I don't know because I can only tell you the things that I know. You know, here, here is one hundred percent my responsibility. What I'm responsible. Yeah. What, what I can tell you. This is what I do. If I didn't. This is you went through a period of time where you did that. Why things weren't happening? But you're posting videos, yeah. and, and you know, for a long period of time mm -hmm. there, like here and there, like a couple of videos of like because you were being genuine, yeah. and you genuinely trying, you know, trying to just again trying to be the names. Trust me. So, as someone that came up with the name and being who I am, which again, you know, I know there's so many people that are yeah. part of this that have been asking me for a long so time many. what's going on. I've been basically like you know, kind of hands behind my back and duct tape a little bit at the same time because one, I'm trying to protect a brand that I still think has great potential and there's a lot of people behind it that are that are friends and family of mine, every, every person I know, I mean, really? Yeah. And, then, and then people that have become great friends of mine that I feel responsible for the outcome of how all this goes. So for me, it's not just like, hey man, screw this, I'm out of here. I don't, I don't like how yeah. it's going or... I don't like the relationship Slap I have butt, with certain you know? people or any yeah. of that. It doesn't work that way, you know. So you so you fight through those things to um, get get to a good side. And what really felt good for me at one point was the fact that I I was doing things with um, full like, hey, allow me to go out and work on some different things and look at certain things that are maybe outside of what I do or what I'm known for doing. But let me work on this while this part of the business still functions. And really looking at, I think I see an overall vision of other things that I could maybe go work on and bring to the table to kind of uplift the whole brand as one. Um, as I was doing that, and as we were going through a lot of these questions through what I would call disgruntled shareholders of, hey, man, just what's going on? You know, I've heard this and I've heard that. I what, what's going on? Answer us. Tell us what's going on. And you're just kind of, again, when you're getting that many people coming you're in from bombarded. different directions, yeah. it's, it's tough because you can't just answer three things and not answer five or six more, yeah. you know, and I can only answer what I can answer. So what, what really excited me at one point, kind of, you know, this was end of uh, 2023 was uh, Mark Sima himself had kind of gone through and we were introduced through um, a girl that runs uh, Idaho herself that kind of took on distribution there. As I said, she went as a shareholder from California, from Carlsbad that became involved and really passionate and had been to all the meetings and knew the story as good as anyone, kind of took this to Idaho and, and took on the license on her own because as self, self-distributors, self that's kind of the way it was yeah, presented. Yeah, Idaho's was, run totally different. You know, we, we have somebody in Iowa and somebody and you go kind of take that on your own because it's like we, we're, we're California and we're here and we don't have the manpower to barely do it here. We can't go do it in all these different states. If you want to go take it on, then you go get your license and do all the things and we basically give you the okay to 
do I know, do whatever it is. Cool. So, so that kind of happened. And through that, um, she brought in massive amounts of money, large amounts of people. That was the whole thing. The whole point behind this was even if you go to Idaho, much like we did here, and you're able to get it on the shelf in five, 10, 100 places, doesn't mean one bottle is going to come off the shelf. And then you're dead, and then you don't ever get that chance again. Well, the demand's there too now. Yeah. Now you have to have it in 100 different places. So, so that was the whole point. It was anybody that goes anywhere to any other state was, well, you got to take the same business model here and go you get use, 100, yeah. 500, 3,000 people to be vested in the brand. Ambassadors. So that right. when you are in Idaho, as we're talking about, in X amount of, it's, a, it's state controlled, so it's a little bit easier in how that works. It's a different story, but... Either way, if you get into X bars, you need the support of the people to go in and go, I want Trust Me Vodka. Trust Me Vodka, Trust Me Vodka. If you don't have that, getting into a 1,000 stores doesn't do you any good because yeah. no one's buying. Yeah, you have 10, and then you're, you're just dead off the shelf. Yeah. So, so basically what happened is, is through um, a successful effort to do that in Idaho, um, a lot of people getting involved, a lot of people that were putting in larger amounts of money. That Higher profile Very people. passionate about it because they saw, they single-handedly saw the success in Idaho alone, much less... California. California yeah. and just looking at the social media and just seeing the overall growth of the brand. You know, So uh, exciting for those people. So again, uh, Mark Simo at one point threw a lot of kind of like, hey, hey, what's our next move to get over some of these struggles and humps of how we start to grow more and, and raise larger amounts of money instead of trickling it in um when did this really like take head like this, last so, this, year? so this was this was yeah this was you know late 2023 you know mid to late 2023 yeah. when like, he kind of said hey let's let's out. go uh, let's go um form this advisory board basically gotcha. again a, a board with two <clears throat> people isn't the best <clears throat> business structure which was myself and mark simo so not the best business structure so kind of as a third but with multiple members create this advisory board made up of multiple different backgrounds and successful very successful business people um, from all over to really come in as an advisory board and speak to and kind of dive in and go hey man we're all we're all about this not only will we put in more money but let's let's sit down and really get into that part like what where, where, where are we at with the sales where are we at with our margins where are we at like let us as business people help you kind of break down some of the things that you've maybe not been able to see or yeah, again you just wrap fall, your arms around you fall into the repetitiveness of doing the same thing year after year after year after year after year yeah. to a fault or not seems successful but you okay, need the, someone to there needs to be a change because we're trying to get over that next hump and we could do that quickly with the success of where and the mark saw going. this too right so so, so again his, his you know his really his idea in a sense to kind of like hey let's really form this so that also the shareholders can see that there's a group of people moving forward, making decisions, better, whatever you want to look at it, helping make decisions, it's not one person. Because really in the end, as a, as a CEO um, title, that in two board members, kind of, kind of anything I said was laughable in a sense, you know, <laughs> really, really the best way to put it. Hey, let's do this, that's a great idea, we're gonna do this, you know. So, yeah. so, so it was, for me, it was exciting just to know that the more people that we can have on, on that type of role to really have the ability to dive in and look at the whole brand. And, and that's exciting for any brand. And, and large brands do this all the time. You know, they bring in consultants or people that really come in and dig into. Most of the time they just sell the, and just like go, yeah, right? The, the employees and whatever. So, you know, so, so for me, it was exciting because it was like, man, this is, this is you know, again, I, I'm not capable of doing that. I don't have the decision. I don't, I don't have the capability to make that decision to do it no matter what. So I'm glad that this was a great idea for him to form this advisory board and go. As this group started to kind of dig into things, I mean, I know there was a lot of questions. How many, they, how many roughly, how many people were on this uh, board? Nine. Nine, yeah. Okay, yeah, so now you so, yeah, guys so have gone so from much, two, much, to, two to much, a much larger group. Yeah, so, so that, that advisory board kind of you know, worked as one collective group that would vote to almost be as if they were a third board member. Let's mm -hmm. say, in a sense, you know, to, to simplify. I mean, how much authority and power did they have at that time? I mean, again, an advisory board is, is an advisory yeah, board. Yeah, okay, okay, you know, got another, you. Another thing you can throw out the window if you want to throw it out the window. But yeah. we, also, we also made it public to all the shareholders, all 20,000. It was publicized that there was an advisory board in Idaho. How'd they take to a, that? Excuse me? How'd they take to that? Like, um, I mean, again, I think there was so much unknown that people 
people didn't have answers to a lot of the questions of what things that were going on. So I think for some people, and again, I'm, I'm saying this to, yeah, you're just based, based on, on things I've heard, yeah. I think it becomes a little bit of like, okay, okay what, what's this cover up of, the, who? because what didn't happen for, for a reason is the advisory board members were not named Be, for the fact that it wasn't, okay, n- now this group, let's go attack all these people and, and ask, okay, you're the advisory board, we want all these answers tonight. That yeah. we've been trying cool. to get now for we have nine, yeah, six people months. that we can attend. Yeah. yeah. So so I think, you know, that was the part that for, you know, and, and I agree with that part that okay, hey, you, you gotta know that this is a good group of people and they will be introduced, but introducing them tonight and telling you where they are and giving their phone numbers or whatever isn't <laughs> yeah. isn't gonna bode well for address. anyone. Yeah. So fly so, out to, bunch of tickets to Idaho just went yeah. on. Stock, so so know? that so because of that, that was kind of the reasoning not to list and name those people as much as it makes sense because then you would have confidence in looking these people up. But overall, them. like do you think that like there was some confidence? Okay, but, like they're un- unbelievable group and I and I think some, I think I don't know that there was any confidence from outside shareholders necessarily. I think I had more confidence in the fact that I I understood the story that would be told in the future. Hopefully, could we get there and work together and get some of these things and kind of some outside eyes, yeah, right? Get, get like, some help that could yeah. that could thrust outside us eyes. forward and, and get us good. get us to where we need we need to get back on track. I felt like because again, we we'd lost a lot of our our people internally, and you know, m- more things fell on my shoulders and. I was thrown into a board member position and a lot of things. It was just like, man, but this is things. tough, but I, I bring it on. Cause again, yeah. I'm, I'm here because I have to be, because I got a ton That's of people stopped hanging out that I, that, yeah, I get a <laughs> ton, of, I get a ton of people that I want us all to win. And I can't just throw up my hands and go, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want anything to do. I, I don't know how to do that. I couldn't do that. So, yeah. so for me, again, it was, it was, made sense. You were throw, honest. Throw, you know, get in, be uncomfortable, you learn, were vulnerable do, the, do those things, honest. be vulnerable. Yeah. And, and that was it. And anytime I could talk to anyone that I could, um, I would be as honest I, as I could because yeah. that's the only way I know. But I also know that I don't, I don't like to sometimes talk to people when I don't have the couple answers that they yeah. really want because then, because then it, it looks like, well, he's he's still he's lying to us. And he's he's still the guy. Lying. He's hiding stuff. Now from you're us. Yeah. the guy, right? And, and I totally understand that. I I get. Yeah. If I flip in and put myself That's in that person's shoes, side of I being... totally get it a hundred percent. But again, all I can do is my honesty and look you in the eyes. And a lot of these people, I went, hey, I I know this person enough to know about them from the times I met them that I could sit down and have a conversation with you, and you're at least going to hear me out and see me and know me for who I am. And that's the best that I can ask for at this yeah. time. You know, so I had a lot of those opportunities. So this board like kicked in into the board kicked year. in. They started, you know, kind of again, like what, what, all, what was all, happening? All, right? po- all positivity because they, as far, that's why they wanted yeah. to get involved. They were, they were honored to be asked to be part of this board. And they all wanted to be, be and, and, and ready to like, Hey, we, we have access to, we have money, but we have access to people, to money because of our, our um, past yeah. successes. And, uh, we you know, we lo- we love to be involved. So that, you know, again, it's just let's this get our, was the let's plan. Get our, like let's yeah, let's go. get our feet wet. So they would have board meetings that did not involve myself or Mark Simo. It was it was individual board meetings where they would report. You know, every everything's documented. They would report back. This is how our, our advisory board meetings go. These are topics that we brought up. That you know, this is what we discussed. That's how it's voted, etc. So things were done very by the book and done professionally. Prop, done, like a, done you, you brought yeah. in a so, so it was great. Group. So. So again, um, I had very little communication with this group, but I had an understanding of who the people were. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd, been, I'd, I'd yeah. met some of the people through events going to Idaho and events we did in Vegas and different things that I was able to meet these people with Mark Simo, have phone calls with these people once they got involved. That was like, hey, well, I mean, we, we don't know a lot about you at the same time because you're kind of tucked behind the scenes, but... We we're on the advisory board now. We, we want to know. We want to know. We want to know about everyone that works there, not just you. But yeah, you're, and this is after you're, you're the slowly soul. people yeah. started like some of the people that we know, no names, but like people started to kind of slowly fall off. Yeah, yeah. So so as a as a board member for Trust Me Vodka Inc., um, this is a separate Trust Me Vodka Idaho is a separate entity God. that was through Mark, much like when you go in, again, at state, you go in, you apply for license. So it was a separate. Everything to basically run 
Idaho, trust me, vodka, where we oversee, you know, how, how it works and operates exactly the same as here. Right. Trust, trust me, me vodka, vodka Inc. Trust me, vodka had Inc. Had nothing to do, no. so like, that, as far so, as, like, right. it wasn't an umbrella. Yeah. It was two so, separate. So, so, it's a, so it, is, it is an umbrella in a sense, but you're putting, it's a different, you know, the, the, the girl that went in and did that, she basically files for and applies for that license in Idaho for herself with her name on it, and those are her responsibilities there as a distributor in a sense, a sales rep distributor that she's in charge of Idaho, but she's getting product from Trust Me Vodka Inc. She's using the marketing, et cetera. Gotcha. Same exact plan of what we're doing here, you know, so it, it is it is collective in a sense. So um, this, this group basically was put together and was part of Trust Me Vodka Idaho. So this, this was kind of like, hey, look, their, their thought was to really uplift Trust Me Vodka Idaho be able to kind of put money into Trust Me Vodka Idaho and kind of kind of have a separate entity that is still a, to a collective and would still benefit the shareholders. As far as anyone knows, it's, it is under the same umbrella and it's the same effect because in the end, all sales and everything that we do is for the sake of the shareholders. That's the number yep. one thing. That was their, their number one thing in this more than anything was the fact that same. They also brought in family members and friends and people and they were the faces of the brand in Idaho, they started. They basically and, started and again, like Idaho, publicly building. Like, okay, we're going to do this. Yeah. Like, let's... So Idaho versus California, the the scale yeah. of that. You know, you are the face there because yeah. Idaho is much smaller yeah. than let's just build it. <laughs> so, so they were really helping to, to get in and do that. I was excited about that. I had had small conversations with them here and there again, and trying to understand the artwork side of it and what I did on the marketing side and just different things to get to know me a little bit more. Um, through that time, fast forward, you know, there started to be, you know, a little bit of turmoil and uh, communications between all of us and how we talked and what was it like? And that's, I mean, like, I mean, I know you can the, only briskly the, talk. These but. are these are the parts that I can't answer, not because I can't talk about them, because I don't know the answers to them Got much you. more. But you so, just knew that there was a so so stalemate. so. What we can do is we can fast forward into 2024, which early 2024, in what I thought were positive um, communications on how we're taking a group of people and taking everything we have. You were just like every other investor. Possibly like, like, like so aggressively going to do whatever we needed to do, be it financially, be it, be it the, the Vision, intelligence and the, the understanding of a business and maybe a business plan, a 2.0 to go, okay, here's what we've been doing. We're going to, we're going to keep doing that, but we're also going to do this yeah. and we're going to really get aggressive. Sell. Like you guys were like, cool, let's right. just continue to grow. And with, with the help of this group, yeah, which absolutely. is amazing, which is and, brilliant. And it's much needed. Yeah. Instead of just after after kind of really downsizing and, and losing a lot of people, it's it's good to have. And again, these aren't people that are getting paid. This is just people that are in that have put investments in that are willing to give their time to see what can we do to help this succeed as quick as possible. That, that's that's basically the the, the simplicity yeah. of it. So that was my excitement. Through that, things just started to get interesting and weird and almost uncomfortable as to you know. Lack of um, being able to communicate or being told not to communicate or how whatever the verbiage was on just, you know, we'll handle this. You you handle what you do, the art and the marketing. We'll handle the business side of it. it is this is coming from to... Trust Me Vodka Inc., not Trust Me Vodka Idaho. Trust Me Vodka Idaho is wanting to know why I'm not yeah, more they're involved. They're welcoming you, yeah. Um, I can't really answer that. I'm just not. Um, and over time we can, we can basically fast forward to where it got, you know, really upsetting and weird for me and kind of everyone, but trust me about it as well was, um, you know, early, early 2024 in January, I was, I was literally not, not told to where there was no phone call. There was no text. It was kind of through an, a, you know, last employee that, that is there that is, you know, considered kind of a friend of mine there that was. You know, basically, like you're you're not welcome on the property anymore, and um, we, we, you were you were just all of a sudden yeah. like you're not. And I don't yeah. know and, all this and, stuff. And, and, like, and, and never and still cause still you've been to this day, there's been so no tight-lipped. there's been no explanation or reasoning behind so it. So they just were like, there's, "Hey, cool, by the way." Don't. There's been no official. You know, I I, I could have shown up there, and but, yeah, but I, I that's not me. I don't. But do that's that. not how you operate. Um. So. So, you know, again, through, through the, you know, third party, it was kind of like it, when he comes here, you don't let him in. He's not welcome on the property. And that, you know, within a couple of days with, within less than a week, 
no, no more email access. All email communication was gone, which was you know pretty big for the brand and the amount of people that all I communicate with on on Holy a Lord. daily basis. Um, and and then being you know in an incorrect way of doing it, also removed from the board. So the board then became one person. Um, Trust me, yeah, Inc. Yeah, so that became one person on the actual board of Trust Me Inc. Um, and so I was, I was removed from that as well. So this all happened within a matter of, you know, a few days it was just a quick, quick, boom, boom, boom. Um, wow. that was it. So again, that was, that was the writing on the wall for me that, okay, well, I don't know what happened here, but you know, there, there's something wrong, the communication, clearly anything after that started to just become, okay, well, what's going on here? Cause I was already, I was already uncomfortable with the way some of the things were going. And I guess my involvement in my wanting to be part of a resolution and fixing things became a problem somewhere, you know? So for me, it starts to become, okay, well, how, how much is this something I want to be a part of if I'm not, people aren't wanting me to be a part of it. And when I say people, I think we're, we're really limiting this down to one, two or three people within trust. One me person with like three people in the person's ears. Yeah. yeah. So, so for me, so for me, it became a challenge because at this point, like I said, my connection to the brand, my, um, you know, when, when you say something's your baby and all that, you know, it, it literally is that to where it was there before anyone ever saw it. This book I show in the beginning, I'm holding yeah. this and I've been every part of anything I can do beyond my comfort zone, any of that in networking, the successes, the I mean, failures, you, you, all you of that. You legitimately sacrificed everything about you that I've known because I've known you before this. You went out and you were doing everything, sacrificing your personal life, just like I do at work, like sacrificing everything you did for this for so many years to just be clipped quick. And I think, you know, there was some uneasy unrest with people because there's so many people, and we talked about this, that I think they kind of turned the turret towards you because it was easy and it was it was convenient and it was like you're still somebody that's out and you're still doing it because you still believe in it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so so I'm um, you know I, again I I haven't you know it's been for me easily six months more. Let's just let six to nine, you, six you to nine months that yeah, I've, I've been you know again <laughs> I've been, exactly kind of having to do that trying to communicate with some of the shareholders internally to kind of. Hey, you know, I can't talk to every single person for multiple reasons. I, I, literally, I literally can't because I don't know. It, and, and, and I can't because I, I can't because I'm it's also not, not I'm also not trying to talk bad about the brand yeah, because it's not the fair. brand. You've never ever ever, and I'm going to tell you anybody that's watching, a single time for a single person ever. I'm sorry to interrupt, but like no. never ever ever bad a no. single person. No matter who we're talking, like no matter no. what, no. never bad mouthed. A single investor, person, me, a vendor, a rep, ever. That's not who you are. No, but it, but again, it's a unique situation that I have to, you know, you, you have to dive in and look into you things went through that, it, man. I, that I, I'm not happy about and other people aren't happy about. So then it becomes, okay, a different like, hey, we're in this together, but well, no, we're not in it together because you're the guy that's, you're the front of this. So I want answers from you. What are you doing? What are you guys doing? What are you, what's... And, you know, and you're sitting there and as, as much as you can believe that, hey, here's what I know and here's what I don't know. And I want to know alongside with you. I just can't. You're no I, different I, than I'm, everybody I'm, else. I'm going to get the answer if and when you do. If, yeah. if and when you do. You know, and, and that's the challenging part is at the same time, I, I have a, you know, I, have, I, I don't have, I, I ate through any savings account, through any yeah. anything I had. I thought everything was personal. I yeah. thought you were just going through, per- and I yeah, wanted to no. be there for you, and you were so tight-lipped. Yeah. Until so so that, that was the challenge, and, and what kind of came back to us kicking this podcast back up, and me kind of telling my story of this number one, but you know, even in the last one and in future things that we'll be talking about is kind of like for those of those for those that don't know me. And those that kind of forgot where I came from and what I did, the reason that I got into Trust Me Vodka kind of as a creative and coming up with these things is because of what I've done for years in yeah. sports and action sports and fashion industry and all these different opportunities that I've had that 
you know, I was fortunate enough over the years to build up enough of, you know, kind of this creative agency that I would turn things away and I would be able to kind of really, you know, have a business that was able to, you know, make a living. And, and through um, Trust Me Vodka and slowly being able to kind of like, hey, spend more time and more time and more time solely on Trust Me Vodka, I was able to 100% dedicate myself and the success of where that was going to go, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in 100% on this and th- this is going to succeed. And like anything, it's going to succeed on as much effort as I put into it and as much effort as I give. So I committed for many years to this is it. You know, this, this, is, this is my job. This is my profession. This is my passion. This is my baby. This, this is baby, everything. This is um, everything you put behind th- it. That I dove on and that's all people need me for. You know, So if, if I wanted to go out at night and just hang out with some friends and not talk about Trust Me Vodka, well, I'd better go to church because that's I, anywhere else I'm going to be talking There's about Trust Me Vodka. 20,000 people yeah. <laughs> so, that are out. So yeah, that, and they that want was it. answers. And I, and I should have just have, been going to church. But. You don't have the answers. And, and you know, I think that's like the craziest it's part like um I, I can probably get into this you know and yeah. we can move into this but it, it's like i'll be personal and and be genuine and say that you know i think starting in the january period i'm not on social media a lot i talk about that all the time like i'm enough like but I, i'm not that guy and 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 i think with what we do i need to be more in tune and so i started getting in tune and every time i clicked on starting in january there was kind of this uprising mm-hmm. right there's people saying slanderous things, saying things. I think, uh, uh, you know, like broad swooping generalizations and mm-hmm. things that are, they, they have no base. And then, you know, it starts this uprising, right? right? So there was this uprising, like kind of starting on some of these like different pages that had to deal with Trust Me. And there's different like canvases and people like building these teams. And I think they, they, they wanted answers and mm-hmm. you genuinely wanted everyone to have those oh, answers. You care so mm-hmm. much and you have no idea. Mm-hmm. You care so much. And that's why you're still clinging with every fingernail to everything. And you have been your whole time with mm-hmm. Trust Me since you created the brand. And seeing these uprisings, like I, I had, didn't tie two and two together. Like you just slowly like started to like go. And I was like, well, maybe he's going through things. And so, you know, we talk and there was never a word. It was not, uh, 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 but I started to see it. Mm-hmm. Right. And on a, as an outsider, but as an investor and as like a really good, like best friends, like, like seeing it. It's, I started tying two and two together, I think, after this year, like January, February, March, right. as we got into this. And the uprisings were like, let's turn our turrets to the person that's even somewhat active mm-hmm. towards you, which is baseless. Right. You, you're the same person. You became that person that's like, I want answers too, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you don't, you're like, I want answers. Like, you want to know. And right. you got clipped from going and, and you followed suit even though you could have gone and you get clipped from email and, and it's important for people to know. Like it was not, and I'm just learning about all this stuff. Yeah. Like you did not, and I'm, I swear, like I did not know about all this stuff to like showed up today and yesterday and the day before, like mm-hmm. this last week. So, I mean, where, like where are you at now? Like what, like what's your feeling? Like obviously this is huge. This is someone just, taking the rug out from under you in a six month period. Yeah. So, I mean, where I'm at now, obviously it's, you know, it's not, it's not great news and where I'm at specifically with the brand and basically being, you know, cut out from the brand. I'm sure any, anybody that does know me, it's, you could see that in whatever, everyone in every form and, and not, you know, what's going on, but something, something's not right. Um, again, unable to talk about it because of the fact that, you know, this, this Idaho group specifically that was involved, I felt like from what I knew was a, a really good opportunity and something that I think was could be exciting for me, but exciting for me because I think it's exciting for the whole brand. And that for that's twenty for me, plus. that's the ultimate part of the You're excitement. You're just not a shit talking and the yeah so that, snivelly person. So that so like. that group in, you know, in any um, you know, Anything that I knew also became things that I couldn't talk about because also it's they can't be it's not my place. You know, it's not my place on any negotiations that are happening with Trust Me Vodka Inc. and Trust Me Vodka Idaho that are for the same purpose. Again, it's it, it's everything that this group and I think anybody to date was doing is to have the shareholders benefit. Like that's the number one thing with this and the no, number one reason we're even talking about this and I'm not just moved on to something else is only because of the shareholders. Yeah. Only 100% that's in the story. So 
um, my life would be much better if I could just move on and trim the fat yeah. and cut out. If you were that the person to be like, ha, 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 and be gone. And again, out. what you could do if it's a job and other things, those things happen. People move on. Yeah. Doesn't always end well. It is what it is. Wash your hands. You move on. You know, so again, I'm, I'm not able to be in that situation. So where it stands today is. Um, you know, just recently, again, like you talked about in the beginning, we can, we can kind of get into that. There was something that was put out by Idaho that I, we had just learned about, you know, kind of at the end of the week when we were doing this, uh, this last episode, we really got details as much as we know. I mean, I, I don't want to say it's vague, but there's only so much, again, that they can say there's a lot of, there's a lot of legalities behind, you know, that I'm sure there's so much more that I'm sure someday we'll hear about and find out, but this thing came out today that kind of broke down where Idaho stands with what the efforts that they were working on for, you know, six plus months and the efforts that they put in and kind of how that has ended and where that sits today. Um, we kind of saw this at the same time and kind of looked at this yeah, today. So I, I, I printed it out. I want everyone to just kind of know, like this came from the Idaho, trust me, vodka, Idaho, LCC, um, or LLC, sorry. Um, and, and I just want to read it just if you're cool with it, um, as current shareholders deeply invested in the success of Trust Me Vodka Incorporated, we wish to communicate the decision to disband the Etwell Advisory Committee based on the lack of recommendation approval from the current board of directors. Over the past six months, this committee represented as Trust Me Vodka Idaho LLC has dedicated significant time consulting financial resources and expertise towards crafting a comprehensive business plan aimed at propelling the Trust Me brand to new heights for all shareholders. Despite our unwavering commitment and the diligent efforts put forth in presenting a strategic plan to the CEO and board of directors, it has been communicated that the organization will be pursuing an alternative direction. While we understand the decisions of this nature are complex and multifaceted, we cannot help but express our disappointment. The plan, which included a new board of directors and CEO, along with a condition that the advisory committee members only be advisory to the board and not on the board, was meticulously developed with the best interest of the shareholders in mind, emphasized transparency, prudent financial management, and a clear path towards growth and sustainability. As of April 2nd, 2024, we as the official at Will Advisory Committee, Trust Me Vodka, Idaho, LLC, respectively acknowledge our disassociation with Trust Me Vodka Incorporated. However, as shareholders, family members, and friends, our hopes for the brand's future prosperity remain steadfast. We extend our well wishes to Trust Me Vodka Incorporated and its endeavors, fervently hoping for a bright and successful future ahead. Well written. It speaks a lot, speaks eons. It's basically me being an outsider and we're on the show and I'm going to be candid. Like It's basically saying we did every single freaking thing that we can and, and I'm going to be dead candid. There is opportunities for them to take it to the next level and there was just walls right stone walls i'm just learning about like stone walls so it's just it's it's unfortunate it's it's highly unfortunate being someone that loves you loves the brand i have trust me socks on like <laughs> just being that avid about it and you just living through you and seeing that that came out, that went on social media, that was a rollout. It, it, I saw it, I'm like, I have to print it. I talked yeah. to you before we got in, I'm like, can I read it? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, so for me, and I mean, obviously that's that's kind of, you know, there, I'm, I'm sure this is gonna be um, something that's ongoing. Obviously this group is, you know, you hear where they're at. Um, 
from from what I know. So again, it's speaking speaking from what I know, which is rumors and me not being around there and not in the office and not around these people. So I'm you know I'm I'm kind of now at the point that. I know about as much as you do. I guess you're dissociated. Um, it, it's but sad. But but it's I really do sad. I do hear things. So again, I'm not I'm not going to speak for anyone or put out put out rumors about anything that's happening. I don't know. Um, we'll all figure that. We we will continue as we do more podcasts to update any you know actual facts that we yeah. have about anything that's anything going on. That anybody anything. that um, may, may or may not know what that happens. But you know, for me, from what I've heard, there there is still a trust me vodka ink group and other people outside of just Mark Simo as active CEO currently that are looking to um, move forward with the brand. So the brand is not dead by any means. Um, the, the hopefully still there and looking to protect this and move forward for the sake of the shareholders. So that's my number one thought and prayer is that is the case and that's what's moving forward. I don't know that that's going to happen overnight. I don't know when Willie or anybody will have an answer to that. Um, but, you know, basically kind of hoping for new management, I guess, is what I would look for is that that there's, um, I, I think it does have to be that. I think it has to be new management. I don't think it can go right back into exactly what it was. And I think that's the fear that any of the disgruntled shareholders that, you know, kind of got involved in this or involved today in getting some of this and really still, like, we still don't have answers and still things that you and I want to know, just like they do. Mm -hmm. um, th those answers aren't here today, but hopefully we'll get those. And I think the only answers that any of us will be, ex accept will be that there's a big change. I think there has to be, there has to be a big change, but the most important part about it, any big change did not work with the Idaho team, but it has to be something that is protecting and still looking out for the benefit of the shareholders. Um, I know there was a rumor that I heard that I will 100%. And again, hey, Mitchell's part of this. He's a big liar, whatever it is. I'm going to tell you this Idaho group, what I know about them and the judge of character to understand who these people are, how it got started, where what their it came best from, interests were. the indiv individual purpose, all of that, that these people were 100% had the best intent in the world to do this and to do this for the shareholders. Um, I heard a rumor that possibly they're looking to, you know, just steal the brand and take the trademark and run away with it for themselves and tell everybody that, you know, sorry, it's our company now and we're going to go. That That is 100% not the case. It's also not the case because they don't need to do that because they're, you know, if, if you knew their background, I'm sure over time people will start to know who some of these people are. You'll understand that this that's that's not who they are. It's not something I would have ever supported in any way, and still to this day, I'll stand behind the fact that it's a great, it's a great group of people that had great intent, and these things don't always work out. It's unfortunate, but I'm just hopeful that there's, again, there's a brand that's still got a great name, still has a great product, and their potential has to happen soon. Brand, you can't, you can't take a brand to here and shut it down for years and hope that it's going to come back, you know, so... Something has to still happen quickly. I don't know what intent there is on how that's going to work, but I just hope there's new management, new structure, and new ideas that come in. I'm not, I'm not part of that. So, um, any questions that people might have about the future of the the, the marketing and the art and the design, I, I yeah, I'll, I'll find out when Talk you to find the out. Other guy. Um, you know, a big part of me also telling the story is last week, and will continue to do is the fact that the the, the challenge in being kind of handcuffed and not being able to talk for so long is the fact that one, I'm trying to protect the brand. So I don't want to talk bad about anything to do with it. Cause I don't want to put out some, a light like that, that is starts to, you know, crushes the brand overnight. Don't want to do that. But I also, when I'm not doing that, everyone just assumes, well, Mitchell works for trust me vodka. So we don't need him to come work with us or, do any yeah. other cool things that we know that he could have the ability to do. Uh, so you better for, hire this cat so for, so for me yesterday. It's, it's also been a you know a blatant opportunity to you know plug myself or put myself back yeah. out there a little again on more than you know indeed.com. You know, typically again, everything that I did in the past was through networking and through knowing people and never having to really sit down for interviews because I could sit down with people that I knew and, and get, you know, good good referrals and be able to have a nice little resume that I could show people and be able to work and, and have those opportunities. And those aren't there when you assume someone has moved yeah. on and they're 
hey, you got a successful brand. I see it everywhere, and you're doing a great job. Not knowing the reality of how like bad, I wish I could hire how, him, but he's how so bad busy. things are for me personally in all of this scenario that we talked about. That's hard for me to get through. You know, daily. I mean, you went through where I'm at and what I'm doing, and, and and we're still going through it. You know, it's it, it's not over. But again. In, in closing, and you know, I'm hopeful that I wanted to tell my story, the truth of what I can tell today. Um, I know, I know, there's still going to be a lot of questions and a lot of things that we'll continue to talk about it when we can, how we can. Um, hopefully, all in a positive light. But um, yeah, in, in any of the you know negative things, I I've done my best and been part of everything I can to support this and help it grow and get to that point. And and still to this day, d- doing this. One to clear the fact that anything that's going on, or like I, I haven't been a part of it. I haven't known about a lot of it. That's number one. So, um, again, couldn't really talk about it because I couldn't, which is the worst thing in the world. Not being able to. Yeah. That's the worst thing in the world. Again, you know, me and the people that do. I, I'm, I'm even, even when you have a discrepancy with someone, like I, I don't want to get on the phone or a text. I want to just sit with you. Let's talk it out. Hash it out. Uh, yeah. Let's go. That's and, how you always and, been. And however it ends, you know, it's it, it ends that way. But. That's who I am. So um, for for today, that's kind of all we know. That's all I know and all I can say. And I'm, deep. I'm, I'm hoping for for the best. But I mean, coming from these days, it's been tough. And to where we're at right now, I'm glad that we got to shed some light. I'm I'm glad that you were vulnerable and and uh, able to share at least what you can share. Yeah. Um, you know, as we move forward, well, we obviously have a. You know, for me, for me today, I'm looking at new opportunities and things. You know, it's it's always hard because you you, you know, not getting any younger, and you you yeah. put so much time into certain things, be it relationships, business opportunities, etc. It's always hard when you kind of have to just hit the reset button and kind of like wipe away, you know, yeah. 10, 13 years of your life like it never happened. But at the same time, I I always find ways to look at you know things happen for a reason, and and you know the the obvious stereotypical things that people say but at the same time you have to be positive and optimistic and those are the challenges in the midst of doing something like this and always having late nights thinking about every single person that I personally brought in to get involved in this and told them about it and you know just the yeah. just the not being able to deliver like hey it, it, it worked exactly yeah, like I told it. you yeah. you know but also not having control to be able to do that you know that's the hardest part um but yeah so that's why i wanted to be able to just kind of share, share the story as it stands today yeah. i'm, I'm awesome. looking i'm looking for new opportunities and hoping for positive better hire this guy yesterday <laughs> he's going to be off the in the future but then, real yeah, fast. That's, that's where we're at it's been been tough deep so, well, awesome ended on a uh yeah, so. phone call last week just wanted to shed light enough to where we can uh Go with the uh, Concord grape and the ginger ale because ginger beer sucks. Yes. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Don't forget, we're on YouTube, we're on Spotify, we're on Instagram and Facebook, Chasing the Cool, the podcast. We'll be back again next week. We uh, and Not to spread light on this, but we, we have plans to shoot some other shows. I know this one's juicy and deep. We'll be back again next week, yeah. Sunday. Well, we're and again, we'll try and give it up safe. So we're not, you know, we're not going to never yeah. talk I'll about trust me vodka updates. again, yeah. and, and hope to stay positive with it, and hope that there's I'm some still trust me to the hope socks there's, and hoping for everything. You know, maybe the next show something great happened that we didn't also know about, and yeah. we'll get that news. If something and, crazy and, happens, and he'll chime now, in. But. We have the ability now in our home studio here to to come and film. But thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Chasing the Cool, the podcast, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We'll all see you next week. We'll see you next week. Look up the transfusion recipe. Let's go. Masters, we'll be talking Cheers. about it all. And Masters week. UConn just won. <laughs> Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. Good night. That was tough. That was a tough show.